uh, when you started out by saying that you spent 20 years working on networks and data centers for financial services company, all of a sudden I say, they must be in dire need to hire you back. <laughs> so... He's not for sale. <laughs> no, but... but, but um, with, with all the knowledge that you have gathered about cryptocurrency, uh, what would be your guesstimate to develop and create a similar cryptocurrency? I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, you know, there's, as you said, there's like 500 different currency on, uh, on mm -hmm. the networks. What would be the cause to develop and create a, a similar cryptocurrency as Bitcoin? Well, every day somebody decides that uh, Bitcoin isn't the correct answer, and they have a better one. And they go ahead and choose to try and build a better cryptocurrency. The thing that blockchain technology has done is it's taken the very natural inclination of people to create currency as a form of language, as a form of expression of value, which exists in every society, whether it's from prehistoric times with beads and feathers, uh, to modern times with uh, company money, company scrip, uh, and all the forms of currency that existed before federal, nationalized, monopoly uh, money. That possibility of not only creating a currency, but that currency being instantly, from its creation, global, secure, fast, predictable, uh, and transparent. That capability means that now a 10-year-old can create a currency, and that currency can be as secure as the currency created by a monarch uh, you know, a few centuries ago. So just like the internet brought uh, desktop publishing and communications into the hands of individuals, and enabled a capability that previously was the purview only of those who had football field-sized printing presses. Uh, the blockchain technology has democratized access to currency creation, and as a result, anyone with the impulse to create currency for reasons serious uh, to reasons that are completely trivial uh, can now do so. And that currency is instantaneously global, secure, and unforgeable. So, and without cost. And without cost. In fact, you can go onto a website and create uh, the Ringette coin uh, today for <laughs> a fifth of a tenth of a, of a Bitcoin, and you know, for a very small amount in any case. And, and very soon that will be free. And uh, I do anticipate that you will see coins created by children, by performers, by entertainers, by football teams. And most of these will only have... Um, entertainment effect or entertainment value, but some of them will surprise us and cross into the realm of economic value. Mm -hmm. So it changes the fundamental relationship between individuals and the use of currency as a form of expression. Second question, and I have a... Uh, okay. You said while individual Bitcoin wallets can be targeted and compromised, uh, if not properly secure, how can one properly secure its Bitcoin wallet? Uh, very, with great difficulty right now and great uh, technical skill, which is one of the issues that needs to be addressed over the next uh, many years in order to make Bitcoin more accessible to mainstream users. Uh, right now, it's difficult to do so because our computer systems are not designed to secure money that has taken a pure digital form and resides on, say, your iPhone or your uh, desktop computer. For experts and specialists, there are um, new devices that come out, for example, uh, wallets that are completely uh, embedded in hardware, small devices that you plug into your computer where all of the Bitcoin keys are held only on that device. I actually print out my Bitcoin keys uh, on paper, and I put them in a fireproof safe and I store a second copy in a bank safe deposit box, which is ironic because I'm securing my Bitcoin by putting it in the vault of a bank. <laughs> but to, to that making it physical actually allows me to impart the greatest way, uh, the greatest um, form of security that I know how to use, uh, because f physical security is something that we're familiar with. 
information security is actually being accelerated because of Bitcoin, and a lot of innovation is happening in that space, which is very exciting. Okay. Third question. You indicated that a person could acquire a loan in Bitcoins, and how would one go about that? Well, there are already organizations that are implementing uh, a concept called peer-to-peer -peer lending, which exists in the traditional currencies. Uh, for example, um, in the traditional currencies, there are uh, companies like LendingClub.com, where I can go out and make a loan to uh, a fellow American, who, and they will end up paying a lower interest rate than a credit card, and I'll actually get an interest rate that's higher than I would with a certificate of deposit. And if I diversify my loans enough, and only invest a small amount in each loan, I can suffer a pretty low default rate. That model can now be taken global. And I could lend uh, money with Bitcoin, and there are companies already doing this, uh, to someone anywhere in the world. And in fact, in that case, I would invest perhaps in two, three thousand different loans, so that default on one loan wouldn't affect my entire, uh, my entire amount and diversify my risk that way. This has tremendous implications for worldwide credit, because it not only allows people in the developing world to source credit, but it also allows people in the developed world to invest their money directly yes. um, with the borrowers, the, yeah. without intermediaries, at much lower cost. Well, and with, it's already happening. Yeah, but, but you have an intermediary. I, you have this, this, this organization that you know, kinds of, of directs what you're prepared to 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 uh, to loan and the people that are wanting to acquire a loan so you have this today we yeah. do uh, yes indeed but with bitcoin uh, this is one of the tremendous things that's happening is that many of the traditional financial services can now, can now be redesigned and re-envisioned in a completely decentralized fashion without intermediaries this concept of disintermediation or removing intermediaries and connecting directly buyers to sellers, consumers, lenders to creditors, consumers to merchants without intermediaries is the magical power of Bitcoin. That's what this invention has allowed us to do without having to establish trust first. So with Bitcoin, we can have a completely decentralized market for credit and lending that is simultaneously global, near instantaneous, uh, and that allows access to a vast pool of credit, uh, and, and that's a very exciting prospect. Hmm. Um, okay, uh, what would, from your perspective, and Jerry, it's the last, my last question. If Canada would move forward and, 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 and put some regulation, as some witnesses have, have asked uh, of us, and that the world did not follow, you know, the, the, the G7 countries did not follow in, in similar regulation. What would be the, the, the pros and cons of, of such a move? Well, that's very interesting because already we see tremendous regulatory fragmentation. Uh, we have a regulator in New York State that has taken initiative to do regulation based on New York State law, uh, regulation that uh, looks uh, very, very similar to traditional banking regulation and is not very well suited for Bitcoin. And simultaneously, there will be other forms of regulation. Uh, so in the United States, you'll, we're likely to end up with a patchwork of state, local, and federal regulation. And I think you're going to see similar attempts in many countries. Bitcoin technology is such that uh, it can operate across borders very, very effectively, and therefore uh, Bitcoin companies can migrate to the area of least friction and can create the jobs and the innovation and the growth in the places where regulation is best informed about the nuances and particular needs of Bitcoin com companies. So I think Canada and other countries that are looking at this regulation very carefully rather than rushing into it have an opportunity to create an environment that is very friendly to those companies and attract one of the industries that quite frankly is creating thousands of jobs today which cannot be said for too many other industries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>